always with, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, talking about in the spirit of Christ, and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We got to pray for our sisters and brothers. Yes, we do. So what does the word say? That we enter not into temptation. That we enter not into temptation. Tent of doing wrong. Well, let me tell you. Let's go to Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray. That ye enter not into temptation. But the spirit indeed is willing. But the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. But the spirit indeed is willing. So I want to. Talk to us about walking in the Spirit. How can you walk in the Spirit of Christ without Christ being right here in the flesh? He's, he's, he's here in the Spirit, though. We, he left his company, his Spirit. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Let's start at verse uh, 16, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, 16. 16. This I say, then walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. This flesh will have you doing all kinds of stuff, but you walk in the spirit. The word says again, this I say, then walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. It's a tugging war going on, that carnality in that spirit. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Choose the spirit. Don't walk in the flesh. Verse 18. So how can we continue to walk in the spirit, though? What does it take? The word says in verse 18, but if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. We walk in the spirit of Christ. We walk in the spirit of Christ. And we know what his spirit gives us. Christ Jesus. He gives us eternal life. Everlasting life. What was my theme for today? What did I start out talking about? If anyone can shout it through the camera. Um, I talked about the everlasting. The Lord's everlasting love. That was my title. The Lord's. Everlasting love. And can no one talk the Lord's love? Amen. I want to talk about promises. God's sure promises. In this case, it was to David. But let's look at Psalms 89, 17. Psalms 89, 17 says, For thou art the glory of the strength. Yes, God. And in thy favor... Our horns shall be exalted. In this case, when it's speaking about to, in thy favor, our horn shall be exalted. It's talking about you're strengthening the Lord uh, when you're shouting Jesus' name, when you're saying it in the name of Jesus. Uh, there's all power in the name of Jesus. We got victory in Jesus. Yes, victory in Jesus. And we can be faithful in Jesus because Psalms 89, 24 says, but my faithfulness, and my mercy shall be with him. And in this case, speaking to David. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with David. Speaking to David. God sure promises to David. God walks with us each and every day. If you choose Jesus this day. Yes. <sighs> wow. Mm. I want to talk about a praise for the Lord's goodness. We ought to have some praise in ourselves. When we wake up, or you ought to be on fire for the Lord. Oh, yes, you ought to have some fire. Thank the Lord God Almighty. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, with a foretaste of glory divine. Hallelujah. Yay, God, I beseech you, brother, by the mercies of God, uh, present yourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable sacrifice. 
Be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. We got to have some word down in our souls. Thank you. But there ought to be a praise for the Lord's goodness, uh, for the Lord's mercy. If you lost a job, God will give you another one. Did you hear what I'm saying? Uh, with me losing my husband. But now Jesus is comforting me. Yes, Jesus is comforting me. There's goodness in Jesus. There's goodness in this word. How do I know? Let's go to Psalms 92. Psalms 92, 1 and 2. And it says, it says, it is a good, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto the Lord's name, O Most High. To show forth that loving kindness uh, in the morning uh, and in thy faithful and thy faithfulness every night. Are you faithful every night unto the Lord? Woo! You know, last week I talked about folks tell me they don't pick up their Bibles until Sunday. I truly can't get with that. How do you how do you how do you live day to day and you don't even consult God? exhortation to the Lord. How do you live day to day and not saying and knowing his word? How do you do that? How do you? I know I can't do it. I need the word every day, daily. But for those of you all that are waiting until Sunday for me, I, I'm, I'm, I beseech you that pick up the word of God throughout the weekday and you'll have a better week. Yes, a better week. But Psalms 92, 2. I went over that already. Amen. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to talk about blessed is the man that fear the Lord. If you fear the Lord, you blessed. Did you know that? Yes. Blessed is the man that fear the Lord. And when it says man, mankind. The Bible is just not just for man. It's mankind. So Psalms 112 says, in verse 1 and 9, it says, Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that fear the Lord and delight him greatly in his commandments. There it is. Delightly in, delight, delight him greatly in his commandments. Exodus chapter 20. You should go there on your, on your leisure time. The commandments are important to us in this day and time. And verse 9 says, He hath dispersed, he hath given... His righteousness endure forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. Our strength, we're exalted in Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. I want to say to us that your strength shall increase in Jesus today. How so? I'll take you to the word. And that's the Psalms 914. For that I may show forth all thy praises. In the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice in thy salvation, in the salvation of Jesus. The daughter of Zion is talking about of Jerusalem. We ought to rejoice in our salvation today. Let me tell you about Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a city in the Middle East located on a plateau in the Judean mountains between the Mediterranean and the Dead Sea. Yes. It is one of the oldest cities in the world and is considered holy. Give us three points. I'm going to take my seat. Hallelujah. Point number one. <sighs> Do you trust in his mercy today? Psalms 13, 5. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. Well, what is salvation? Salvation means deliverance from sin and its consequences believed by Christians to be brought about by faith in Christ. It is by faith in Christ that we believe that we are delivered from sin and its consequences of the sin. When you get a chance, read Romans chapter 1, the entire chapter. Point number two. Can you be joyful in the Lord? Yes, you can. And that's Psalms 35, 9. It says, uh, and, and my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. 
It shall rejoice in his salvation. I rejoice in my salvation today. We ought to rejoice in the salvation of Jesus. Could nobody do it but Jesus? Nobody can give a salvation but Jesus. We can lead you in salvation. We can give you the salvation plan of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But it's Jesus that gives it. Ah, yes. Jesus gives salvation. I can teach you about salvation, what it means being delivered from sin in Christ Jesus. But it's Christ Jesus that actually does the delivering, the redeeming. Yes, hallelujah. Uh, point number three. The question is, is the Lord our redeemer? And where does it say it in the Bible? Hmm. Let's go to Isaiah 54, 5. For my maker is thy husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall be called. Do you hear what that says? The God of the whole earth shall be called. That means every person breathed on this earth shall be called. One day you shall be called and repent of your sins. Hallelujah. Point number three is the word of God for the Jew only. Converting someone and getting them to know Christ, is it only for a few folk? Is it for a particular people? Well, Romans 3.29 says this. Is he the God of the Jews only? With a question mark in the Bible. Is he not also of the Gentiles? With the question mark. Yes. Of the Gentiles also. And in verse 30 it says. In my last point. In Romans 3.30. Seeming it is one God. Which shall justify the circumcision. Being cutting away. By faith. And uncircumcision. But it's going to take faith. In Christ Jesus. Let's go to Galatians 3. Let's go to Galatians 3. My final point. Galatians 3. Verse 8 and 20. To bear the scripture out. So verse. Galatians 3 8 says. And this is what this means. It says. In terms of circumcision and uncircumcision. It means this. and I'm In the New Testament. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. Preached before the gospel unto who Abraham saying. In thee shall all nations be blessed. In Abraham. Verse 9, so then they which be of the faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Abraham, Abraham believed, and that's what made him righteous. Because when you believe, you'll walk according to the word of God. Verse 10 says, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curses everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of law do them. We are to obey the word of God. Christ came to fulfill the law and fulfilling the law now that we can live by the word according to Christ Jesus. That we obey his word. Yes, we need to obey the word of God. If you'd like to call the church, the number 202-617- 9788. I've gotten many calls this week. Um, please, as you listen to the sermon, do listen intently because I, I give all the scriptures so that you yourself can go over what I um, made available to you. Um, take what I said today and make application into your life. Don't just listen to the word of God and then put it to the side to collect dust for a whole week. I'll need you to Take the word of God for yourself and study the word of God for yourself and make application. Please. Until next time, you heard from Pastor, Senior Pastor Smith of Fullness of Time Church. Be blessed.